Ah, hello there. Good morning and welcome to English Speaking Success. It is so good to see you here. I have a very exciting lesson today all about transportation. We're going to be looking at vocabulary, the problems of transportation systems and some of the solutions as well, as well as finding out what you do when you're in a traffic jam. All of that is coming up. Let's begin, first of all, with a little bit of this. Hello and good morning. It's very nice to see you here. Welcome to the class today. Um, today, as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at transportation. Now, we have looked at travel in the past and transport, but today we're going to look at transportation systems and the problems around them and solutions. Um, things like traffic jams, which is a question people are often asked about. So welcome today. Nice to see you here. You may have noticed um, I have a different background. Um, a few weeks ago, we moved into a new house and we've changed and we're still in Santander, but I have a slightly bigger office space, which is nice. So I've got my desk here and my desk behind me slightly um, and a place for books, which is better than before, <laughs> before I had them piled on boxes. So great. Nice to see you all here. Let's see who is in the house. We've got, um, well, lots of people. Uh, Songbing Kim, hello from Hong Kong. Nice to see you here. Mosen Atarodi from Iran, lovely to see you. Paula, thanks for being here and moderating. Great. Armin, nice to see you. Julia from Myanmar, lovely. Melatis um, Ukulele, good to see you. Louise from France. Uh, Guzel, nice to see you as well. And CBK from Turkey. People from all around the world. Lovely to see all of you here. And a big shout out to... Is that a cow? A big shout out to <laughs> Nyonyo, speaking of which. Nyonyo, or Wen, who is my wife's cousin's um, son, who's going to be watching, I think, this morning. Hello, Nyonyo. Nice to see you. And everybody else, Kazal from Bangladesh, Warinda, great to see you. Emmy, love to, lovely to see you back here again. Long time no see from me, although you may be watching. Um, lovely, Mina from Iran as well. And Shimina from the UAE. It's nice, people from all around the world. Um, and mm -hmm, on that question, people from around the world, I have a question for you, actually. Um, I'm interested to know where in the world you are. So let's see. Let's try and if you can, if I can show you this, let's see if this works. Where in the world are you? If you in the chat can just show me or write down where in the world you are, then we should be able to see where you are on this map. This is ingenious. Um, technology from Stream Alive. So here you can see the map, right, of the world. So let me take this up a little bit. And as we can see people in America, I assume not Americans. <laughs> We've got some here from the center looks around. I'm not sure where that is. Italy is that? Or Ukraine maybe? We've got Iran 14 over there, it seems. We've got quite a lot over here from India, some over in Bangladesh, 23. Let's have a look where that is. Where are these people from? Look at that, from Hanoi. Fascinating, brilliant. We've got some over here. Look, we've got two people from Taiwan. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Um, lovely. We've got Philippines. And that seems to be Manila, somebody in Manila. But we've got other big populations over here. We've got 13 over here. And these are, wow, Uzbekistan has got five. Turkey has got three. 
over here as well, down in Oman or the UAE, in both. We've got in Muscal and in the United Arab Emirates. And I'm interested in these guys in America. What are they doing over here? <laughs> you guys over here. I suppose you're not American, but you are living in America, I'm sure, right? Pittsburgh and over here in Manchester. Hooray! Of course, if you didn't know, <laughs> maybe you did know, but there is a Manchester in America as well as a Manchester in England. So big shout out for the guys from Manchester. Great place to be, even if it is America. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously. Lovely place. Very, very nice. So people all around the world. We've got one person down here in South America from Lima. Gabri, very nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Isn't that lovely? We can see all around the world people joining us. Nobody in Greenland, but I'm not surprised. It's a little bit cold over there. Excellent. So lovely. Very, very interesting. Now, um, talking about people around the world, I did get an email the other day and I wanted to share it with you because I found it very, very interesting. Um, it was an email from Masume. And Masume, um, he said the following or he wrote down the following, right? Um, he said, Dear Keith, my best teacher, so kind. I hope this email finds you well. Lovely English. It was around eight or nine months ago that I bought one of your courses. And before that, I had been following you on YouTube. Lovely English. I should admit I had lots of difficulties in speaking skill and it was a huge struggle to find a good resource and a teacher. So when I found you, I think a miracle happened. <laughs> a miracle? No, not a miracle. Just a good thing, maybe. I used your videos and could get a band eight. Wow, he got a band eight in speaking or band eight in the whole thing. Um, and my dearest teacher, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I wish I could see you somewhere and tell you how you have played an important role in my English language learning. Thank you very much, um, Masume, for sharing this. Um, it was it was nice. I mean, for me, it's a big motivation, um, a big motivator when people tell me how well they're doing. And to get a Band-Aid is fantastic. What was interesting is that in this, you said you spent eight or nine months. And I think that's so important because I think so many students are in a rush. They want a Band-Aid next week. And the reality is it takes time, right? It takes a long time to build up to that level. So thank you so much for that, um, Masumi, um, for sharing it with me and, you know, inspiration to everybody here as well, I hope. Lovely. Great. So, guys, um, what else have I got? For those of you who are new here, there may be some new people, um, just want you to know that I've got a website as well. I'm not sure where you're watching on YouTube or, YouTube or Facebook, but I do have a website if you're preparing for IELTS speaking or even actually just for general English, but particularly for IELTS speaking, the Keith Speaking Academy. And if you go there, you can find out lots of information about the test. Um, I'll show you very, very briefly, just to give you an idea, right? And the Keith Speaking Academy, um, bring it down so you can see everything. You've got information about the test, the format, the topics, part one, part two, part three. You've got the free live lessons, which is what you're watching now. And if you go there, you can literally download the PDFs um, for all sorts of lessons, right? We've got lessons on work and money, health and fitness, environment. There are lots of lessons there. So go and check them out. We've also got online courses from myself. Uh, my speaking course, the gold course, but also Fiona has a reading course here. Eli has a writing course here. Um, and you can find more courses from myself and the, the bundles as well. So you can go and check out the courses. They're all on the website, thekeithspeakingacademy.com. You can find everything you need there. <laughs> everything to improve your English. Well, everything, everything to improve your spoken English, let's say. Okay, good. So today, what we're we doing? Transportation, right? Transportation. Let me just walk through what we're going to see today. Um, I'm going to come up and see what people are saying. 
what have we got? We've got hello. We've got hello from Turkey. Great. Nice to see you. Hello from Nepal. Lovely. From Syria as well. It really is an international audience, which is great. Uh, Sath is from Sri Lanka. Again, stay strong. I hope things are well improving. Watching on your wonderful video. It's very useful. Thank you very much. Oh, it's nice. Here we've got somebody their first time. Danielle from Korea, by the looks of it, I think. Adelsa says, I'm watching your videos every day, about one hour. Brilliant. Nice. You will see the improvement, I am sure. And also Nazarov from Uzbekistan. Listen, guys, lovely to see you. Today, then, what we're going to do, just to give you a, an overview of the class, OK, we're going to talk about transportation. So I'm going to begin looking at the red bus, <laughs> the British double-decker red bus. Not exactly, but we will look at different forms of transportation. Um, I'm going to be having a look at types of transport or forms of transport or means of transportation. OK, and then discuss the problems because the transportation systems in every city does have some problems. For example, flights being delayed. And if you're in the UK, you'll know all about that at the moment. Um, there's a lot of problems with the the system of flights and the transportation system. So what are the solutions? We're going to be looking at the solutions. You know, what? how do we solve all of these problems? You guys are going to provide the solutions. And then I've got a super tip. Um, some people ask me for more tips about learning English. So I've got a couple of ideas to share with you about how to improve your English. OK, English overall, not just speaking, but every aspect. And then we're going to finish up with some idioms, right? So I wonder if you know the difference between to miss the bus and to miss the boat. Now, apart from the fact that one's a bus and one's a boat, <laughs> duh. <laughs> I mean, one of these is, is an idiom. It has an idiomatic meaning. Um, which one is an idiom? Only one of them is an idiom and it has a very interesting meaning. So we'll be looking at idioms later and we'll finish up with a review with Kahoot as well. OK, so brilliant. That's what we've got planned for today. Transportation. Let's begin with transportation. Where do I start? Always start at the beginning, Keith. <laughs> and just before I begin, oh dear, um, I wanted to share something with you because the on the website, I've started a collaboration, if you like, with these guys. Um, Médecins Sans Frontières in Spain, they're called Médicos Sin Fronteras. In America, Doctors Without Borders. Um, and they basically give medical help, help to people in crisis, humanitarian crisis. Um, and so I've started collaborating with them. And basically, let me show you, if you want to find out more about them on the, on the website, um, you can find out a little bit about them in the section about me. It's not about me, but collaboration. So basically what I've done is that now when you buy um, any of the courses on my website, I make a small contribution to Medicos Sin Fronteras at no extra cost to you. And basically, thanks to you and your help, this NGO can save the lives of those suffering medical or humanitarian emergencies. If you want to read more about them, you can click on the link on the website and you can find about find out about the work that they are, are doing there, basically. OK, so that is it's just something I felt I've known the organization for a few years and I thought it would be nice. Medicine Sans Frontières, Medicos Sin Fronteras. And it's just a way for me to help and for you guys through buying the courses, make a small contribution just to let you know. Great. OK. So from that to transportation, OK, uh, let's go straight in. I'm going to look at some vocabulary first, right? Um, here we go. Transportation. So transportation and transport. This was interesting because I tend to use the word transport, um, but I do see the word transportation written a lot. And we can talk about a means of transportation. But probably in British English, we would say a form of transport or a type of transport. 
you can talk about public transport or public transportation. And the difference is actually is that the first one tends to be more what we say in the UK, right? Public transport. Um, I didn't realize this, but they don't say that very much in America. In America, they don't really use transport as a noun here. They use transportation, public transportation. So the main difference is actually a difference of American and British English, right? But you can use, use both. And in the IELTS speaking, you can mix them. It doesn't matter. In IELTS speaking, if you switch from American vocabulary to British vocabulary, it's absolutely fine. Don't worry about it, okay? Um, in IELTS writing, you must use one form of writing or spelling. Only use American spelling or British spelling, right, in the writing. But in speaking, <laughs> you can do anything. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to show you some pictures, right, um, of vehicles. What an interesting word, right? Vehicle. Difficult word to pronounce. Not difficult, interesting and quite entertaining. Vehicle. Vehicle. Cull. It's got the dark L, the ul. Vehicle. Right. If you're unsure about pronunciation, right, you know what to do. I hope you know what to do. <laughs> what you do um, is you go to a go to somewhere like the Collins website. Right. <clears throat> Let me show you Collins Dictionary. I use Collins. It's a it's a free online dictionary. Um, if I just make it a bit smaller. And because it's free, you get advertisements, but it's very, very accurate. It's based on a huge corpus. I recommend Collins. They're very, very good. Um, and if you go to vehicle, you'll get the word vehicle. 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 OK. And you can get then the phonetic script if you want, as well as all the information. So I think Collins is quite a good um, dictionary to use. So vehicle. And then, there you go, I can put it in for you. There is the vehicle. That's the, uh, what do you call that? IPA, International, International Phonetic Alphabet. I know it's a bit small there, but... Vehicle. Okay, so I want you to guess the vehicle. I'm going to show you a picture. And I want you to guess what the vehicle is, okay? So here is the first picture. <laughs> and just type in the chat what the vehicle is, okay? What is the vehicle? Elam says, I always use the Longham Dictionary. That's also a very good one, very, very good one. What is it? Uh, Viet says it's a bus. Hussein says a train. Sparsh says a train. David says a train. Monster truck. Great idea. Maybe it's a bus. Duan says a train. Amanda also says a train. Oh, Adele, tramway. Oh, interesting. Uh, somebody says a car. Or an automobile. David, that's a very formal word. Automobile. Like a car, right? Train. Okay. Yeah. Nafisa also says a train. Okay. So what is it? Let me show you, guys. <clears throat> it is a train. Well done. It's a train in the snow. First one was a train. Good. It's an electric train, right? I know it looks like a tramway, but it is a train, but it's electric. Now then, the next one. Let's see if you can get this one. What is this? <laughs> Let's see. We've got uh, Adela says a boat. OK, Irene says a ship. Song says a cruise. Ah, a cruise. That's interesting. Um, somebody up here, Noza, said a yacht. 
Interesting. Ship, boat, a vessel. Okay. A ship, a boat, person. <laughs> a bus. Interesting. I'm not sure if that's now. Ship, a cruise ship from uh, Shiakino. Interesting. Emmy also says a ship with a smiley face. Uh, a few of you have said uh, a yacht. Songmin has made up this interesting word, a yacht. <laughs> that's an interesting word. Maybe that's the difference between a boat, a combination of a boat and a yacht. That would be a really good new word, I think. I like that, Songmin. But for today, I'm going to help you and we'll call it a boat. Now, there's another word that you could use. And you're quite close with this word, right? Cruise ship, right? Cruise ship. Cruise is the holiday that you have when you go on this boat, right? But the actual boat is a cruise ship. So be careful of the difference, Hasibul, of the difference between a cruise, which is the holiday or the trip, and the the vessel or the vehicle, which is the cruise ship. Hasibul, thank you so much for, for that because it helps me share with everybody. So the answer is, the answer is what? The answer is this. It's a cruise ship or a ferry. It could be a ferry, but it's pretty big for a ferry. It is a cruise ship. Very, very nice. Right. The last one, guys. The very, very last one coming up. What is this in your country? Because it has different names around the world. What is this? <laughs> Abdo says a canoe for the last one. Come on, Abdo. Biggest canoe in the world. <laughs> Great. Chantal, hello. We've got a tok tok from Hussein. Tok tok. And a tuk tuk. <laughs> motorbike could be a motorbike. Uh, somebody says a car. Interesting. Tok Tok, not Tik Tok, but a Tok Tok. Muhammad Faisal says a rickshaw or a scooter. Interesting. Besak or Bethak. A Toto, a rickshaw, KFC, <laughs> maybe. Moped, too pixelated. Of course, that's the whole point, my friend. Um, Tik Tok. Ha ha, maybe that's true. Carriage. Scooter. Bicyclette. An ill. Mm, interesting. Cyclo. Hmm. Interesting. Bicycle, I've heard of. Motorbike. Hmm. Okay. Interesting ideas. So let me show you what it is. Okay, that's it. It is, well, in, in the countries I've been to, it's either a, a rickshaw. Um, or a tuk-tuk. So I've seen the word tuk-tuk. Uh, Brahim says in India it's a Indian car, a tok-tok. Hassan also says tok-tok. Um, I think, is it in the Philippines, Amanda, that it's a besak, I think? Um, a Vespa, but it's not really a Vespa because the Vespa, I don't think, has the carriage on the back, I, as, my, as I understand it. Um, Fabio says it looks like a CR7. <laughs> yes. Rickshaw is the other word that is applicable. It's not really a bicycle, Leila. It's a bicycle, but it's carrying people. So I think a rickshaw is a good word or a tuk-tuk for sure. Um, a rath in Nepal. And this is the interesting thing, right? In many countries, I know you have different words for this kind of a transportation. A chinch. Right. So these will be the your your own words in your language. Right. Uh, a tricycle, Irene says it's called a marua. Great. So you've got different words um, in English. You could say rickshaw and tuk tuk. I think those are words that we recognize in English um, or a, a bicycle with a with a what? With a carriage, maybe. <laughs> OK, good. So we've got different forms of transportation there. Excellent. Well done, guys. Very, very good. Nice. So let me come back. The vehicles. Um, so we've got the different kinds of vehicles. 
we've got the main ones here, right? So every city has its own transportation system. And of course, you've got public transport or transportation, which is basically available to the general public. So the bus, coaches, so I should say buses, right? If I'm putting it in the plural, buses, coaches, trains, planes, ferries. So ferries, yes, public transport. In fact, the cruise ship, you could say, it's a kind of public transport. Um, so people talked about cruise ships. Taxi, bicycles for rent, right? So let's include the rickshaw, which we recognize, the tuk-tuk, not the tick-tock, the tuk-tuk, rickshaw, tuk-tuk, um, taxi, so on. There may be others. I'm not sure. You can let me know. <clears throat> so we've got private transportation, right? Here we've got, it's basically transport that you own for yourself. Okay. Car, cars, I should put, private cars, motorbikes, you own yourself, bicycles, you own yourself. But notice you can have bicycles for rent if it's public. Um, a jet, some people have their own plane, right? So a plane can be private if it's a jet. Or similarly, a yacht. If you have a boat that you own yourself, it can be a yacht. Uh, autocorrect. What's wrong with autocorrect? <laughs> I can't spell yacht. That's what's wrong with it. Ah, come on. It's not giving it to me. Yacht and um, what was the other one? Boat. You can own your own boat. Lots of people here have their own boat. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Public transportation, private transportation. What else have we got? Horse. Great. Could be. Auto is a car yeah I, we would say car we don't say auto really um in english um that's a bit strange trams we can have for sure public transportation trams is another one great uh the rocket yeah well if you are elon musk that could be your private transportation your own rocket um we've got cruise ship can be private yes it can be aeroplanes Public, yes, can be private. Um, a cab would be a taxi. So let's put that up there. That would be public. Why is it spelling tuk-tuk like that? Is it maybe two words? Tuk-tuk, no. Yacht, I can see the problem, sorry. Um, we've also got van. Great, that can be private, especially for people working, right? Scooter. Great, Jessica, similar to the motorbike. Again, I think that will be private. Okay, lots of them. Monster trucks, tube. Yeah, the tube is the subway, right? We've got the subway, subway. Not the sandwich or the tube in London. I think London is the only country, the only country, the only city where it, they call it the tube. Um, okay, great. So we've got different kinds of transportation or transport. We're going to move on now, okay, um, to look at problems with transportation systems. Let me put that as a capital S. So transportation systems, we're talking not only about the vehicles, but about the whole system, right? From the staff to the schedules, to the roads, to everything. Okay, the whole transportation system, both public and private. I'm gonna show you a video. The video is about four minutes long. I've put subtitles to keep you because it is quite long. Um, but what I want you to do is to watch and make a note and answer the question, what are the four main problems mentioned, right? What are the four main problems mentioned or talked about, okay? So watch the video, 
it's quite long. It's about four minutes, but you've got subtitles to help you, right? Good. We've got a few ideas coming already. I mean, here's some good ideas to get you thinking. Let's share a few ideas. Mohammed says careless driving, right? That can be a problem. Air pollution can be a problem, right? Things like that. Okay, great. So that'll get you thinking. Let's watch and let's find out, or you find out, the four main problems with transportation systems. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. And then we've got buses and coaches. And of course, one of the big problems is pollution. The carbon emissions from buses and coaches is quite significant. Um, and you know, the exhaust fumes, especially in the city, can be quite um, overwhelming. And then there's a problem of overcrowding, especially in the rush hour, when you get everybody on their daily commute and, you know, packed like sardines into the buses and sometimes there are so many people, they're full to the brim, bursting at the seams. It can be a real problem traveling on the bus or coaches. And talking of pollution, of course, the other great polluter is cars. Did you know in the US, almost 30% of greenhouse gas emissions come from cars? Outrageous. And cars, the big problem as well is traffic jams. And this is often due to bad city planning or rather antiquated city design, right? The streets were designed for cars a hundred years ago. Did they exist a hundred years ago? Yes, just about. But of course, they're not prepared for the increase in traffic or the increase in the volume of traffic we have today. And so you get these bottlenecks, um, you get cars bumper to bumper and people get frustrated and angry and do silly things like shout and bib the horn at people. So um, this is it. What do you do in a traffic jam? Me? Chill. Have a bit of music going on. What else can you do, right? <laughs> Sentimiento. And here we are at Santander Airport and well aeroplanes another great form of transport um quick easy and apparently one of the safest ways to travel however there are downsides of course um, pollution being the big one i think in the us aeroplanes give about 10 percent of the total greenhouse gas emissions which is huge and the other big uh, con i guess is well delays right if you're waiting for a, a plane, there are lots of delays, lots of queues. People get very worked up and very, very angry. And this is, well, recently, especially in England, with the huge increase in the demand for travel after the pandemic, um, coupled with a shortage in staff, there have just been delays all over the country in airports everywhere. So yes, aeroplanes, great way to travel, but be aware of the downsides and these two little planes are certainly not going anywhere very very soon. Keith O'Hare for the KBC Santander Airport. Of course a much more um, sustainable and eco-friendly way to travel is the train as you can see here outside Santander train station. However the downside of course is delays. You can get lots of delays on trains. Punctuality may not be their forte and you can be left or people can be left queuing for hours and hours on end or even you'll get cancellations, which can really mess up your travel plans. So trains, good, but there is a downside. And this is one of my favourite forms of transport, the ferry. You can get out in the open, some beautiful views, even have a snack or a drink as you're traveling across. There are different kinds of ferries. The great ones here are really, the great thing about the ones here is that they're almost like a taxi, conveniently ferrying you to the other side of the bay. Of course, there are downsides. One of them is if it gets a bit choppy out there, it can be a bit bouncy, like turbulence in the air. 
with aeroplanes and also they're not the most eco-friendly of um, vehicles shall we say um, although many many ferry companies are investing in um, hydrogen powered ferries and electric ferries but I think these are definitely gasoline by the sounds of it but all the same great great fun great well I hope you could follow that um, maybe the subtitles help you come in with some great ideas absolutely brilliant um, let's have a look at some of the ideas you've come in with um, I'm gonna go back a little bit because you started posting much earlier Jory says pollution right um, Mohammed says stick in traffic I think you mean stuck in traffic noise pollution um, numerous vehicles vehicles can cause traffic jams yep great um, it's not clean pollution right exactly uh, Sparsh talks about pollution um, as does RTM we've also got what else have we got overspeed tendency right I think you mean a tendency to go too fast right what we can say here is a tendency to speed so you can say speed as a verb I was speeding on the motorway so there is a tendency to speed right MH Hackett thank you for that great crowding and a heater so crowding is too many people there's an even better word and as Sh Aquino says overcrowding right overcrowding too many people exhaust fumes emissions lovely vocabulary Sh very 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 nice indeed um, overcrowded buses great great the <laughs> touch of heart says I ha no it doesn't say I'm from Bangladesh that's a touch of heart um, what did you say somebody said Locke said I hate being stuck in traffic yeah absolutely another similar word congestion well done for picking up on that Parisa you've picked out pollution overcrowding traffic jams getting frustrated or angry nice great um, Mary also picks out delays lovely well done um, and a heater says delays oh gee, um, come on delays especially in the UK absolutely which is so true as I pointed out with the um, the flights and the airplanes at the moment Melinda again has got all of those together well done um, Kaung brings out greenhouse gases is other language as well um, we've got ME says increasing flights are responsible for air pollution very true cheap air travel attracts more passengers and thus they die indirectly contribute to air pollution well done although I am a fan of cheap flights because my family doesn't live in this country but balance um, lovely April punctuality is the forte of trains in Japan brilliant because April picked up on the expression or my language punctuality is not the forte of the trains in some countries right they're not it's not the strong point being on time brilliant so many answers so many great answers you've picked up the the main language that came out there so just to recap okay the four main problems that I I pointed out were overcrowding um, pollution traffic jams and delays those are the four main ones there may be others I'm sure there are right some of the language you can go back and watch that again but I'll just pick out some of the interesting language you may want to be aware of right um, peak hours is like is the rush hour is what we call the rush hour the peak hours is the busiest time for the traffic so typically when people are commuting to work in the morning kind of seven till nine and then in the evening in the UK five till six are you know, the peak hours or the rush hours right um, and in those hours there are not enough buses insufficient buses 
Packed like sardines is a lovely expression. It means like the sardines in a tin. If you don't know what sardines are, let us let me show you that expression. Some of you may not know sardines. <laughs> and why should you? Um, packed like sardines, very close together, but the image. There you go. So sardines is a kind of fish. Yep. Yeah? And this, this is a fish that we very often get in a can or a tin. So when you have a lot of people crushed crush together like this, you can say you're packed like sardines. In fact, that's a lovely photo, right? It captures the, uh, the idiom very, very well. So packed like sardines, um, squeezed, crushed, right? Into confined spaces. Full to the brim is another nice expression. Full to the brim. So the brim is the edge of the cup. So if I fill my cup to the very, very top, to the brim, it's full to the brim. But idiomatically, you can say, gosh, the concert is full to the brim, or this, the, the, the bus is full to the brim with passengers, being a bit idiomatic. We talked about emissions, which is a great word to use, right, with pollution. Um, exhaust fumes, some of you picked up on. That's the fumes or the gas from the exhaust pipe. Yeah. And again, if you're not sure about these words, just go into Google. Let's have a look at exhaust fumes and you'll probably get a very good picture. Exactly right. These are the fumes coming from the exhaust. The exhaust is at the bottom in the car. So this is your exhaust pipe where all the fumes come out from. Okay. Good old Google, great teacher. <laughs> Exhaust fumes from cars um, can be overbearing. And then we talk about, yeah, the CO2 emissions. Talked about noise pollution, a few of you mentioned, as well as air pollution. Traffic jams, we can talk about the buildup. So this is a noun, right? A buildup. Well, it can be a verb, actually. The traffic is building up on the road or there is a buildup of traffic. It's more and more cars, right? Bottlenecks. And again, another great word. If you think of a bottle, normally a bottle goes up and then it comes to the neck and it gets tighter. So that's a bottleneck. So that causes traffic problems. Again, go into Google, get a picture, and you'll get some really nice visual support to understand the bottleneck. There's your bottle in the neck. There's a blockage. The cars can't get through. And this is what happens, right, when we're, when we're traveling, especially in uh, busy city centers. So you get bottlenecks caused by bad city planning or antiquated city road system. This word antiquated just means um, old, very old, because the, the city road system, most cities right will be from 40 50 years ago and of course cars have changed vehicles have changed talking about the volume of traffic is nice you can talk about private car ownership all of these collocations really really good to pick out right delays um, trains can be delayed for hours on end it's a nice expression so when you're waiting in the airport or the train station and your plane is delayed for one hour and then for two hours and then again for another hour for hours on end it means more and more hours lovely expression trains and planes can be delayed for hours on end leading to boredom and frustration exacerbated by <laughs> if you saw my recent youtube video you'll know this word made worse, made worse, exacerbated by sudden increase in demand following years of being locked up during the pandemic. <clears throat> and this has happened in the UK. Everybody wants to go on holiday and there are too many people, the demand is too high and there's insufficient staff to cater for the increase in demand, <clears throat> to take care of, right? To take, to cater or to to accommodate or take care of. Right, gosh, okay. So lots of interesting language. Remember, all of these, 
All of these notes over here, you can get on the website, okay? So later today or later in the afternoon, if you go to the Keith Speaking Academy, um, you will be able to get all of these notes from the website. All you need to do is go to the free live lessons and there you will find, later you'll find the latest lesson and you can download the PDF here, okay? So all I'm saying is don't worry if you're missing some of these notes, you will get the notes at the end for free, of course. <laughs> okay, good, excellent. So we've been looking at, what have we been looking at? Let's go back, let's check what we've been doing. We've been looking at transportation, okay? Um, we've talked about different types of transport, including the tuk-tuk and the rickshaw and the ferry. Um, and we've been looking at problems of transportation systems. Next, solutions. Okay, so what are the solutions? Let's find out. I am going to ask you guys directly, right? Um, what are the solutions? So we've got pollution, traffic jams, delays, um, pollution, traffic jams, delays, and the other one, skip my head, overcrowding. What are the solutions? Write me a comment below what you think might be possible solutions to anyone, right? Just put the problem and then the solution. And I will share with you a little bit of piano music, maybe. You're welcome, Leila. Nice. <laughs> I lo love your avatar, Danny. Renewable energy. Yeah, switch to electric vehicle. Tuyet says using renewable energy. This is such a good one. Increase the quality of public transport, more investment by governments. Queuing in trains, widen the road. Stephen, love that. Upgrading the infrastructure, that is fantastic. Love it, nice language. A traffic jam, we must use a smaller car. Mm, yes, that will maybe help also, yeah. For traffic, better road system. Okay, nice. Great, I love this word, upgrade the infrastructure. Nice. Policy, government policy on infrastructure. Excellent, the music is finished and so the comments are finished. <laughs> I know you've got lots more comments, but let's have a look at the solutions. So what I'll do, right, is... I'm going to show you another video, and this is about the solutions. Um, listen to the video, it's quite short, and just see which ideas are the same as yours, okay? Which ideas are the same as yours? Or are there new ideas? Also, notice and type in the chat any interesting collocations, right? Things like upgrade the infrastructure. Well, 
beautiful English, upgrade the infrastructure. So that's just two or three words that usually go together. That's the collocation, okay? Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, we are. Can he build it? Yes, he can. Bob the Builder. <laughs> Big fan of Bob the Builder. I know, surprising at 55 years old, but there you go. So then, here we go. Any interesting collocations and which ideas are the same as yours? Let's find the video. I'm going to move that. Da, 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 da. Here we go. So we have seen the problems with transportation, right? Including traffic jams, delays, pollution and overcrowding. But what about the solutions? Well, as far as traffic jams and delays and overcrowding are concerned, we really need to improve the transportation infrastructures. We need better urban planning. We really have to update the roads, the highways and the flyovers. We need more roads and wider ones um, and ideally bus lanes, especially for the bus. Um, but of course, we need to be careful that we don't encroach upon the green spaces in the city. So infrastructure is one thing, but we also need better vehicles, especially if we're going to combat the problem of pollution and climate change. So many countries are aiming to be carbon neutral in the near future, so new sustainable vehicles are going to be necessary. Many cities are developing and investing in electric, hybrid and lower emission buses for their bus system. Um, in countries like Germany, they're piloting um, zero emission trains, um, which is being extremely successful. And also across Europe, many ferry companies are investing in hydrogen powered ferries that will be much more sustainable in the future. And a final point worth mentioning, right, is the idea of smart cities. And this is the integration of technology to improve the city infrastructure and the city efficiency. For example, you can monitor traffic jams and get the information to the drivers before they arrive there. And this is done with a system of sensors attached to lampposts across the city, collecting information and gathering the data and passing it on to the drivers. Um, similarly for parking, similar systems can be met, can be set up. So all in all, I think a total overhaul of the urban infrastructure is needed and new, more sustainable vehicles will be a requirement in the future. Of course, as always, easier said than done. <laughs> I'm, I'm smiling because I've just realised I, I sound like a politician. I'm like emphasising every second word and pointing and saying we must do this. <laughs> oh dear, I apologise. I didn't mean to come across as a, a kind of a politician, but I just realised the way I was speaking. Interesting. Great. So guys, you've come out with some amazing um, collocations that you've picked up here. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. We've got sustainable vehicles, um, eco-friendly, better urban planning. Keith, the politician. Um, electric buses. Great hybrid buses as well. Well done for noting that. Yes. Marwa, lower emission vehicles. Great. Julia picked up on zero emission trains. Great. Gizem, C-R-I-S-P-R. -I, I thought, isn't that to do with genetic editing? I'm not sure about that. That's confused me. I didn't say that. <laughs> Marwa, smart cities. Great. Um, hydrogen powered ferries. Well done, Huda. Um, yeah, this is nice. Mapir, the integration of technology. Lovely. Marwa says improve infrastructure or, as Finn says, improve the city's infrastructures. Um, 
Yes, infrastructure tends to be singular. It can be plural, but it tends to be a singular noun to be the city's infrastructure. Tends to be because it's the infrastructure of the transportation infrastructure. We're not talking about infrastructure of education and uh, hospitals and it's just one part. So I think it's a specific infrastructure. I would use it as a singular when we talk about the the transportation infrastructure, right, in the singular. Close the window. <laughs> um, okay, good, excellent. The government should improve public transportation. Love your avatar as well, Sunshine. Nice. This was nice, Dan Meow. Combat the pollution. I think it was combat the problem or combat the issue. But you could say combat the pollution to fight, right? Um, what else have we got? We had carbon neutral. Well done, Sparse. You picked up on that. Uh, let's see what else we got. Set up Islamabek. We talked about setting up a system, setting up the, the, the sensors. Now, Mappy, total overhaul. You're almost there. And I'm not sure if anybody else got that, but it's 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 this word overhaul not hole but hall like the hall in a building but spelt h a u l so an overhaul is to change completely so a total overhaul of the system is to completely change the system well done you picked up on the sound really really good nice Okay, lots of brilliant ideas. Well done. Absolutely brilliant. Let me share some of the ideas that I picked out from the language there, right? Collocations. This is what I said. And again, I'll just pick out useful collocations. Um, well, as far as traffic jams delays are concerned, um, so we've got improve the transportation infrastructure. We can pick out that as one. Better urban planning. And if you don't know the word urban, learn this word. It's really important. It means the city, right? City planning, urban planning. Um, update the roads, the highways, the flyovers. It's not the aeroplane. It's the road that goes over another road. Yeah. Um, bus lanes. Many cities have bus lanes, especially for the bus. Um, this is a nice verb to encroach. Ooh, everything's shaking. To encroach on. So to encroach on is to invade the space of somebody, right? So if we want to build bigger roads and better roads, we're going to take up the space of the green grass, right? But we need to be careful we don't take up the green spaces. We don't encroach on. Um, so to encroach on is to move into the space of something, right? For example, if I'm sitting at work, right, and I've got my desk and somebody comes and sits right next to me and puts their books right on my desk and I can say, Oi, don't encroach on my space. This is my desk, my space. Don't encroach on my space, right? Don't move into my space. Likewise, when the government wants to build more roads, the activists, rightly so, say, listen, don't encroach on the parks, right? Don't build the road through the park. Lovely word, encroach. So don't encroach on the green spaces. Uh, combat a problem. Normally, combat the problem. Great. What else have we got? Carbon neutral. Now, I'm sure you're aware of that if you follow climate change conversations. Sustainable vehicles is a good one. Not only electric cars, um, but hybrid cars and hydrogen powered boats and yachts and ferries, as we said. Um, lower emission buses. We've got those in Santander and they're great. So to pilot is a nice word. If you don't know, to pilot can mean to pilot a plane, 
But if you pilot a project, then you're trialing or testing, right? So here, it's not about driving, it's about testing, if you like. So to test in this context, to test. Dun, dun. Great. Zero emission trains, low emission buses, all of these. You can throw these collocations into your conversation and you will sound like an expert. Great. Hydrogen powered ferries, all of these. Um, a final point worth mentioning. That is, is a great way to begin an answer in your IELTS speaking, right? Well, there's this problem, there's this problem. And a final point worth mentioning is da 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 da, right? It means a, a, a point that is important. It's worth mentioning. Smart cities. If you haven't Googled smart cities, go and Google it. It's very interesting. And it talks about the integration of technology to improve the city. Gives you ideas about traffic jams. Um, there's a system of sensors that they attach to the lampposts. Gathering the data or the data. Again, nice language. And then passing it on to the drivers to pass something on. So to pass on is to give. So to collect and give somebody to pass on. And the final one, I think, is a total overhaul that I, that I mentioned and our friend over there mentioned a total overhaul of the structure, an overhaul of a system, an overhaul of any infrastructure or system you can talk about, which is, means a complete change, changing completely, right? Just make that clear, a complete change of something. If my wife said, um, or if I said to my wife, listen, shall we just um, paint the walls in this room? And she'll go, no, we need a complete overhaul. You know, let's change everything. Take everything out, get everything in new. A complete overhaul. But we don't need to. We can just paint the walls. No, a complete <laughs> overhaul. <laughs> it's a great word. It's a nice um, collocation, a total overhaul. And sustainable vehicles, exactly. Okay, great. There's a lot of overlap with um, climate change, right? Here, a lot. Easier said than done is a, an expression that something's easy to say but difficult to do. Very, very nice expression to use. Wow, okay. I do apologize, that's a lot of language. Um, I realize it's a lot. I'm trying to give language for lower levels and some language for higher levels. Because I know as students, we've got students who are quite low in the middle and some very high students. So what I do, whoops, what I do try to do is give you a range of language um, so that there's something for everybody, right? Something for a lower level, middle and higher level. So there is a lot, but don't feel overwhelmed. Just pick out the useful things for you, right? Lovely. Good. Good. Um, we've got... Yes, okay. More comments. <laughs> Good. Okay, then. So I'm going to move on. What's next? Got a question for you. That's what's next. Traffic jams. Traffic jams. Um, here's my question for you guys, right? The question is, is this one. Mm, again, I'm going to throw in this from Stream Alive, which means that your comments will come up here. Um, what do you do when in a traffic jam? I don't know if you can see the question. Let me put the question here. It's clearer. What do you do when in a traffic jam or when you are in a traffic jam, right? What do you do? So you've got, I'm going to put up different choices, right, over here. You can choose one, sleep, listen to music, honk the horn, play on your phone, call a friend, shout, pray, chat with your neighbor. Okay, 
What do you do when you're in a traffic jam? Let's have a look what you put up here. Your comments will be coming up here and we can see here in the top right corner who is commenting. Number two, a lot of people say number two. Number seven from Hentren. Patience. Oh, quite a few of you pray. <laughs> Interesting. Listen to music seems a popular one or playing on your phone. Very interesting. Let me give you a, a couple of minutes to uh, to do this. Well, there you go. Given that um, listening to music was so popular, <laughs> I've got a bit of jazz music for you. But look at that. 44% say listen to music. Interestingly, it seems that 17, 18, okay, 19% play on your phone. 18% pray, which is great. Something you can do in that quiet moment. And that could include a kind of meditation or a prayer. Now, in fourth place, nine, almost 10% of you sleep. Well, how do you know when the traffic gets moving if you sleep? <laughs> I guess everybody will be honking the horn. Uh, a few of you do honk the horn and a few of you shout and some others chat with your neighbour, who is, I mean, the person next to you in the car or in the car next to you either way. <laughs> right. I'll leave that open for a while and see if anything changes, but very interesting what you do in a traffic jam, right? Okay, lovely. So what's coming up next? Well, we've talked about solutions, okay? I'm going to mention a, a couple of things next, which is a super tip, because some people ask me about improving your English. How do you improve your English? Okay, well, obviously, coming and watching a live lesson is one way to improve your English. Um, it can be quite motivating and interesting. You can pick up new words. Practicing after the class is also a good idea. You can review, review the language. Reviewing is so important when you are learning a new language, right? Don't just write down the word, but review the word the same day, the next day, the next week. You need to be reviewing. And practicing with people is a really, really good way. In addition, right, we've got the following, right? This is a couple of ideas, two things that came to my head. Um, the first one is what I call to take an integrated approach. What I mean by that is to practice all four skills. <clears throat> now, if you're preparing for IELTS, I'm sure you are practicing your reading, your listening, your speaking, and your writing, right? People who are not preparing for IELTS often just do one of these. They might just do listening by watching films, uh, listening to a podcast maybe, um, or they may just do a bit of reading. Maybe they read a book or a blog in another language in English, but that's it. However, <clears throat> these will develop your skills, right? If you want to improve your reading, you must read more. Simple as that. If you want to improve your speaking, you must speak more. Simple as that. However, all of these together will improve your grammar, your vocabulary and your sense of the language. So it's really useful to practice all of the different skills to get a feel, a sense of the language, a feel of the language. Now, I know a lot of students who work with grammar books right? You have a grammar reference book 
and you can do exercises with grammar, right? And that's okay. But grammar books are a reference, right? To look at now and then, sometimes. Likewise, vocabulary books, right? For example, this one, English vocabulary book, you can learn some vocabulary, you can do some exercises. Fine, that's good, right? It's okay, now and again, sometimes. But the best way to improve your grammar and your vocabulary is by reading, by reading a book, by listening to a film, by speaking to somebody on the internet, by writing a diary, right? That's the best way to really improve your grammar and vocabulary because you expose yourself to the language so much and you build up this sense of the language. Really the best way to practice the skills. And number two is to practice each skill widely. Practice each one widely. So again, if you're not preparing for IELTS, a lot of people, like myself with my Chinese, right? I only practice speaking Chinese. I don't read. I don't listen much. And when I do listen, I listen to one thing, right? It's a, it's a film. I listen to films and I watch films. But that's it. And really, to improve your language skills, you need to listen widely to lots of different things. I should be listening to news, talk shows, comedy, politics, podcasts, all of those to improve my overall Chinese. Same for you in English. Read widely. Don't just read the same thing. The BBC news website every day. Okay, but read other things. Read novels, newspapers, blogs, poetry, whatever recipes, um, whatever it be, read widely. It's the way to improve your English. It's not an earthquake, it's my table. Speak widely, chat on different topics. I think for IELTS students, that's not a problem because you're practicing on all the IELTS topics. And likewise, write widely. I mean, yes, write essays. Well, there's one, not put him. But also write a diary. Write an email, write a letter to somebody, write a blog, even write a novel, even if you're not going to publish it, right? Just write widely. The key word is widely. Practice each one widely because that's going to give you the flexibility you need, okay? So that was it. Those are my two quick tips for improving your English, your overall English. Great. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm just looking at some of your comments to see. Yeah, watching social media, reading books, newspaper, exactly. Improve your writing skill, then write a blog. Write a diary every day. Write a letter to a friend, even if you don't post it. Just write widely, widely. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I hope so. Watching English movies is one way to learn English. It's only one way, but you must do other things as well. Listen to other things. <clears throat> Domenico, you say, I've been focused on language that is not normally used in books because I believe what gives you fluency is your target language, the kind of language you use in everyday life. That is true. That is true. Um, absolutely. So if you can listen to chat shows and not just chat shows, but people speaking everyday conversation, that's good. But, you know, it's also good to listen to speeches by politicians, to listen to broadcasts on the news, because it's, it's the growing of your vocabulary that's so important and that sense of language that you get by listening, reading, speaking widely, right? Excellent. And probably working on the language every day is a key thing. Yeah, Daniela, great reminder. Lovely. There we go. Let's move on. Idioms. I'm going to come towards idioms next. Idioms about transportation or talking about transportation. Okay. So some of this is a review, but we did talk about 
packed like sardines. To be packed like sardines means crowded, very close together. Normally about people in a space. For example, we are packed like sardines on the bus in the morning during rush hour. <clears throat> okay, excellent. <clears throat> Next, to miss the bus. Now, to miss the bus is not an idiom. It means not catch the bus. <laughs> you arrived too late, okay? It's not idiomatic. It just means not to catch the bus, to miss the bus. However, to miss the boat can mean that you did not catch the boat, but it has an idiomatic meaning, which is to miss an opportunity. So you could say, I have missed the boat with that promotion. They've already chosen someone. Okay. So it's that situation at work where you're trying to get a promotion. There's an opportunity, a new job position, and you think, oh, I'm going to apply. And your friend says, too late. They've given that job to somebody else. You've missed the boat. The idea that the boat is disappearing. Your opportunity is disappearing. Bye-bye. You've missed the boat with that opportunity. Or that ship has sailed. <laughs> There's the other expression. Very, very similar expression, right? Um, that ship has sailed, meaning that opportunity has already gone. So very, very similar expressions, right? Um, for example, if I can put that up, can I put that up? Yes. Stop thinking about the promotion. That ship has sailed. Focus on something else. Okay, so you've got two expressions very similar. Mm. <laughs> Great, we've got, I'm just seeing, I have missed the boat. Harriet, I, I wonder which boat you have missed. What opportunity did you miss? I have missed the boat. Tan says, people are packed like sardines on beaches. Yes, very good. Lovely example. Great. Uh, to hit the road is a good expression, which means to start a journey. I can maybe add that one here as well. Yep. To hit the road. So many people, when they're going on holiday, they'll say, tomorrow we must get up early because we need to hit the road at six o'clock. Time to hit the road, to start a journey. Nice. Great, good. TNT channel, lovely to see that. Okay, any other examples? Lots of questions. <laughs> okay, lots of questions. I'll come to the questions later. I'll just go through here then. To, dr to drive someone up the wall is to make them angry. Um, for example, waiting in traffic drives me up the wall. You can say waiting in traffic jams or waiting in traffic is fine. Drives me up the wall, makes me crazy. We can also say drives me round the bend. It drives me round the bend. I can do the same one. Drive someone round the bend. I think that be, might be quite British. Maybe those four people who were in America who were watching this at the start, you could let me know. Is this used in America? To drive someone round the bend. <clears throat> So waiting in traffic drives me up the wall. It drives me round the bend. Okay, great. Hajj, this is nice. Stop thinking about her. That ship has already sailed. Lovely example. Great. <laughs> Mabast, it's a good question. 
What's the benefit of idioms when Americans can't understand British idioms and British can't understand um, American idioms? Um, it's a great question. The benefit is obviously it brings a sense of unity to the people who use it. So it brings a sense of belonging to the British or a sense of belonging to the American. Also curiosity that when you come across an American idiom, it's really interesting and curious. And I often ask American friends, oh, why do you say that? I've never heard that. And then they will explain. And it's interesting why the idioms arise. It makes the language so rich. It makes life interesting, <laughs> I think. OK, any other examples? Ah, delays me. Good, Bia. When I missed the bus, it was driving me up the wall. That's a good example. You're almost there. You're almost there. But rather than using was, just say it drove me up the wall, right? It drove me up the wall in the simple past. Okay. Nice. The other one, bumper to bumper. Okay, that actually you heard you heard that earlier on. We used it in one of the videos. Bumper to bumper is when the car bumper, so the edge of the car is the bumper. Bumper to bumper, there's no space between the cars. Again, I guarantee you could do a, a check on Google and you'll get a really nice picture of the bumper to bumper. Look at that. There you go. Bumper to bumper. So there's the bumper of the car and the bumpers are so close together. You get cars bumper to bumper when you're parking, but also in traffic jams like this, they can be bumper to bumper, right? Nice. Whoa, come back. No space between the cars. The traffic was bumper to bumper all the way home, for example, right? Okay. <laughs> Great, Shine has an example. People are packed like sardines in local trains. Yang Wei, this is a good one. Nice to see you here. I'm so fed up with waiting. I'm bored to tears waiting in the line. Yeah, that's nice. Talking about delays and waiting. I'm bored to tears. Bored to tears. Almost crying. Nice. My arguments drove him up the wall. Yes. Okay, there's a lot here, but I'm going to move on because of time. Lots of questions about listing information. Doing a video about that. Okay, I'll have a look at that. Off the beat and track. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting in traffic jams makes me go ballistic. Okay, lovely. Good. So we've have a look at a group of idioms. Um, there are more and I will take some of your ideas and add them to the PDF later. Remember, you can always go and download the PDF, the PDF from the website later on at the Keith Speaking Academy. But for the moment, we still have one activity left, if I remember correctly, because we've looked at tips on English. We've looked at idioms to miss the boat, right, to miss the opportunity. And Kahoot, we're going to finish with a game of Kahoot, OK? Um, I will set this up. If you're new here, this is very, very simple. You need to go to Kahoot.it. Can I find that for you? You need to go here to kahoot.it. Keep watching me. Um, I'll set up the questions and you then have to choose A, B or C or D with the right question. And to see if you can remember the language that we have been studying today. Or have you been sleeping at the wheel? Hmm. We're going to find out. OK, so let's get this together. And uh, a quick reminder just before we do that. Ba -ba -ba -bum. I'm just going to show you on here that if you are interested in getting the PDF, go to the website Key Speaking Academy later, um, go to the free live lessons and you will be able to download the PDF from today's lesson here. This will change later today. Um, you can also check out online courses by clicking at the top. There's my course, Fiona's and Eli's course. 
other courses as you scroll down. So go and check out those on the website if you'd like to study more with me. Uh, my most popular course is the Gold course, um, which helps prepare you for IELTS speaking, part one, part two, and part three, with strategies, model answers, hundreds of idioms and expressions to help you speak naturally and more confidently in the IELTS speaking test. That said, let's move on and finish with Kahoot. Okay, where is it? I've lost you. Come here, my friend. <laughs> So Kahoot.it, I'm going to set this up. It'll just take me a couple of ticks, a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, what you need to do is go to Kahoot.it, put in your name and the code pin, and then you can play with us. Don't worry if hmm, everything's changed. Don't worry if you cannot get in. You can always leave your answers in the chat box. Right, let's start this. Let's get going. Bum, bum, bum. Classic mode. So here's the pin, right, for you guys. When you go to Kahoot, it's 11600. Eight. That's one one six zero zero eight. Put in your name and the pin, and we can play together to review some of the vocabulary. Great, I can see some of you coming in already. Thank you, Paula and Burns, for moderating today and sharing the pin and everything else. So Nied Morshed, I have seen your comment about the listening information matching. Um, I will see, okay? Thank you for the suggestion. Right, we've got quite a lot of people in, that's great. Journal with Lily, you're in, great. BB, what an interesting question. I think, it, your question is, do you prefer a boy or a girl as a father? <laughs> what an interesting question. I don't see them as boys or girls, but just as people. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Asha, you're not the only one making driving your mother up the wall by making your room a mess. You're not the only one. <laughs> Miss Yasso, I've missed the boat to show you my example. Ha <laughs> ha, but now you haven't missed the boat because I've seen it. Okay, lovely. I think we're all in. Well, we've got 151 people in. That will be great. Let's move this off. Um, remember, if you're not in, don't worry. You can just put your answer in the chat. Let's start with the first question on transportation. We need to update the roads and highways and car parks. In fact, all our city infrastructure structure vehicles transportation we need to update the roads highways and car parks in fact all our city blank infrastructure structure vehicles or transportation what would be the best answer you have 30 seconds by the way to answer well done huda duong yeah well done the vast majority you got infrastructure, which includes the roads, the highways, the car parks. Great. Structure is not very clear here. Vehicles, no, it's not the vehicles. And transportation, well, that's just too general. The best word definitely is infrastructure. Good. So on the scoreboard, th is number one, Anne second, and Jenny is in third place. That means that you're the quickest, right? Getting the right answer. Let's move on. Next question. Flights can be delayed for hours on blank. Finish, top, final, end. F 
Flights can be delayed for hours on blank. Finish, top, final, end. All right, well done, Vanda, Rahin, Deep T, well done. Fidan, well done. Ashika, looks promising. Yeah, 84 of you got end, which is absolutely right. For hours on end is a lovely expression, meaning for many, many hours. Like it never ends. It goes on and on and on, which often happens, right, with delays. They say, listen, the delay, this happened to, to me, I think, a couple of years ago. They said the delay, the plane's delayed for two hours. Two hours later, they said, we're sorry, but there's still a problem. It'll be delayed for another hour. An hour later, we're sorry, it'll be delayed for another four hours. What? And it just went, it was delayed for hours on end, like just on and on and on. <laughs> for hours on end, that's the expression. The other words don't really fit in this context, not for this uh, idiomatic expression. Lovely. Number, oh, scoreboard. Any change? Trung An has stolen up into first place. Tom second. Duong is back in third place. Here we go. Question number three. Bad city planning has led to blank and traffic jams. Bottles, bottle tops, bottlenecks or bottle bottoms. <laughs> Bad city planning has led to blank and traffic jams. Bottles, bottle tops, bottlenecks or bottle bottoms. Huda, 12 hours, I feel your pain. <laughs> Whoa, fantastic bottlenecks. Well done. Almost everybody got that one. Lovely. Here we go. Scoreboard. Very similar. Rose is the highest answer streak of three. Well done. But Trung, Tom and Dong are still at the top three. Here we go. The last question. I think you have missed the blank with that job opportunity. I would start looking for a different one. Ship, boat, bus, train. Come on, everybody. I think you have missed the blank with that job opportunity. I would start looking for a different one. Ship, boat, bus, train. Well done, Harriet and Layla. Jessica, well done. Layla, Yo Yo, Eric, all of you, well done. Oh, look at that. The best score yet. 99 of you got it right. To miss the boat is to miss the opportunity. Well done. Lovely. You've got the idiomatic expression. So let's find out the score. Third place, Nyung, well done. Second place, Rose, you've really gone up. Well, well done. Trung An got into first place. Well done. Mary and V were the runners up. <laughs> oh, excellent. Guys, well done. Fantastic. So listen, that was great. Um, a nice way to review the language. We have come to the end today. Um, we've had a busy day today, right? What we've done today, just to recap, we've been looking at transportation. We looked at different kinds like the rickshaw, the ferry, the yacht, public and private. Um, we looked at types of transport, as we mentioned, um, problems ranging from delays, overcrowding to pollution and other problems with transportation systems. We've looked at some of the solutions, right? Including, what were the solutions? I've totally forgot, but <laughs> um, an overhaul of the system, investing in sustainable forms of transport, sustainable vehicles, low emission trains, hydrogen powered ferries, um, carbon neutral cars, hybrid vans and trucks, Lots of solutions that we talked about right through the videos. You can go back and watch the videos again. Um, we talked about some ideas on improving your English, including 
watching the live lesson, reviewing, practicing, practicing widely all four skills, reading, writing, listening and speaking widely, not just the same thing every day. And as somebody said, practice every day. That should be super tips, shouldn't it? Not super tip. <laughs> We've looked at some interesting idioms from missing the bus, which is not an idiom, to missing the boat, which is to miss an opportunity. And we finally finished with Kahoot. That's it. So just to remind you, Keith Speaking Academy is where you can find the resources for this lesson and lots more. Uh, the YouTube channel, if you're on YouTube, then please do, you know, turn on the notifications subscribe to the channel always helps turn on notifications so you find out about the upcoming classes what i'm doing on youtube and facebook if you're on facebook is we have the live lesson it's once a month okay so the first thursday of each month at 10 a.m spain time because i live in spain although i am from manchester in the uk um it's the first thursday so the next class will be September the 1st. There you go. September the 1st, once a month. Um, if you want more live lessons, you can come and join me in the gold course. Um, go to the website. You can find out information about it. We do two extra live lessons a month, as well as the complete course and a private Facebook group to share questions and answers about everything around IELTS speaking and learning English. Um, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was a pleasure, as always. And uh, enjoy your August. If I don't see you before September the 1st, have a great time. If you're taking holidays, enjoy your holiday. I hope you don't get any delays. Let's hope not, right? Okay. Take care, my friends, and I will see you very, very soon. All the best now. Bye-bye. Take care.